Chromatography Theory, Chapter 3, Chromatography Data Smoothing. This educational video has been brought to you by Chrome Perfect, the leading independent chromatography data system. In this video we will be using Chrome Perfect version 8 to demonstrate the topics being discussed. We will also review some academic images which are fairly low resolution, these are not indicative of Chrome Perfect output. However they are useful to demonstrate some of the points of discussion. If you would like more information about our software, please visit our website at www.chromeperfect.com or call 9735868551. Smoothing Theory This chapter explains the effects of detector noise on peak detection and quantification, and how these effects may be reduced or eliminated by smoothing the chromatogram prior to integration. What is noise? Strictly speaking, noise is defined as any variation in the chromatogram that is not caused by the passage of an analyte through the detector. However, it is convenient to distinguish between slow fluctuations that occur on a time scale larger than the peak width, drift, and rapid fluctuations that occur on a time scale smaller than the peak width, noise. Smoothing reduces only the noise. To remove drift, one must subtract a baseline chromatogram. Contributors to observed noises are discussed elsewhere. For the purposes of this chapter, the source of the noise is not important. Noise measurements and the signal-to-noise ratio. Because noise is a random process, putting meaningful numbers on the amount of noise in a chromatogram is difficult. Experienced analysts can easily make qualitative estimates of noise, simply by looking at a chromatogram, but these are usually estimates of the peak-to-peak -peak noise. This measure is not strictly meaningful in a mathematical sense and tends to overestimate the noise, because the most extreme noise excursions are taken as representative of the entire chromatogram. A better measure is the root mean square or RMS value, in reflects all of the data in the selected region. Noise is always present to some extent, but it affects results only when its amplitude is significant, relative to the peaks of interest. The ratio of the RMS noise to a peak's height is referred to as the signal-to-noise ratio for that peak. When samples are large, the signal-to-noise ratio is also large, greater than 10, and detector noise is negligible. As the size is reduced, the signal-to-noise ratio diminishes, and detector noise becomes progressively more significant. Eventually the noise will prevent the analyte from being detected and quantified. What constitutes an adequate signal-to-noise ratio depends on the purposes of the analysis. When precise quantification is not required, a ratio as small as 1.0 may be acceptable. Because the several analytes in a chromatogram may produce greater or lesser detector responses, and because chemists are used to thinking in terms of amounts rather than microvolts, it is common to convert the required signal-to-noise ratios into amount units. In this way, each analyte may be assigned a threshold of detection, which is the smallest amount that will give a detectable peak, and a threshold of quantification, which is the smallest amount that will give a peak that is large enough to be accurately integrated. Chrome Perfect supports noise measurements, when analyzing or processing chromatograms, and in real-time plots, during the data acquisition phase. There follows a quick demonstration of how you would use the measure noise feature within the software. Chrome Perfect also allows users to automatically make noise measurements, using a timed event within the method file, or to report the noise in a custom report. We are not going to cover these advanced features here. Effects of noise Noise affects the integration of peaks in several ways. The chromatograms shown on screen show the lower regions of two identical peaks, with and without added noise. 
Notice that the noise has affected the bass line in two ways. It has altered the starting and ending points of the bass line, and it has lowered the bass line. Both effects are consequences of the peak integration algorithm, which contracts and lowers the bass line until the chromatogram trace does not penetrate it. On a noisy chromatogram, therefore, the bass line is drawn from one negative going noise peak to another. Altering the starting and ending points does not significantly affect the peak area or height, but lowering the bass line increases both the peak height and area. In this example, the height is increased by 8% and the area is increased by 17%. As the peak is integrated, noise near the peak top will affect the calculated height, and noise anywhere on the peak will affect the calculated area. However, these effects are less significant than those due to the lowered bass line. What is smoothing? If the data sampling rate is adequate, it is possible to selectively remove noise from a chromatogram by smoothing. Essentially, smoothing involves replacing each data point in the chromatogram with the suitably weighted average of this point and a specified number of its immediate neighbors on either side. Mathematicians will recognize this process as a convolution of the chromatogram with a window representing the weighting. The window slides across the chromatogram as each data point is averaged. Chrome Perfect supports five smoothing algorithms. The first four are linear algorithms and differ only in the weighting values. Generally, they tend to reduce peak heights and increase peak widths, but peak areas are unchanged. Rectangular smoothing is a simple running average. All average data points have the same weight. Triangular smoothing gives the most weight to the central point, tapering linearly to zero at the edges of the packet. It is equivalent to two rectangular smoothings with half the width. Hamming smoothing also gives the most weight to the central point, but tapers in a sinusoidal fashion to near zero at the edges of the packet. Peak broadening is reduced, but not eliminated. Savitskigole smoothing also gives the most weight to the central point, but the weights go below zero at the edges of the packet. It is optimal in that peak broadening is minimized. Median smoothing is a nonlinear algorithm that replaces each data point with the median point in the packet. The median point is the point in the window that is greater than half of the other points and less than the other half. Median smoothing files off the most extreme variations in the chromatogram, leaving the other data points where they are. It will slightly reduce peak heights and areas by filing off the top of the peak, but peak widths are unchanged. With any of these smoothing algorithms, the effectiveness of smoothing depends primarily on the choice of the smoothing time parameter which determines the number of data points in the window. If this number is too small, then the noise will be incompletely removed. If too large, then peaks will be unnecessarily distorted and peak resolution may suffer. Ideally, the window is wide enough to span several noise fluctuations, but still narrow compared to the width of the peak. In this situation, the noise tends to average to zero, while the peak is only slightly altered. Effects of smoothing The upper trace of the plots shown on screen shows a noise-free chromatogram. The middle trace is the same chromatogram with added noise. The third trace shows the noisy chromatogram after rectangular smoothing with a smoothing time value of 1.5 seconds. This value is abnormally large but was chosen for demonstration purposes. Noise measurements reveal that smoothing has reduced the noise by 82%. This table compares the upper and middle traces, listing the ratios of the calculated peak area, height, and width for each of the four peaks. The effects of noise are obvious. The peak areas are high by 133% for the narrowest peak and 14% for the widest peak. The peak heights and widths are also increased but to a lesser degree. These results are typical and show why often choose to quantify by height when significant noise is present. This table now compares the upper and lower traces. Note that smoothing has improved the accuracy of the calculated peak areas. The excess area for the narrowest peak has been halved to 69%, and the improvement is even greater for the other peaks. Smoothing has also increased the width and greatly reduced the height of the first and narrowest peak, 
but the other peaks are less affected. The figures for the last peak differ from those in the noise-free chromatogram by only 1%. These tables do not reflect the limits of smoothing. By carefully adjusting the smoothing time, even better results may be obtained. Choosing a smoothing algorithm. The previous illustrations all employed the rectangular smoothing algorithm. For peaks that are sufficiently wide, such as the last two peaks above, the other algorithms produce similar results, and there is no particular advantage in choosing one over another. However, when noise levels are high, it may be necessary to use a relatively large value for the smoothing time, and the rectangular smoothing algorithm may cause unacceptable peak distortion. In such situations, the triangular and Hamming, and especially the savitsky golay algorithms are superior. The savitsky golay algorithm is unusual in that it preserves not only peak areas, but also peak widths. It is particularly good at reducing high-frequency noise, but less effective with low-frequency pump noise. The savitsky golay algorithm will also produce derivative chromatograms. This overlay plot shows a chromatogram, top trace, and its first two derivatives. The first derivative passes through zero at the exact position of the peak top. The second derivative passes through zero at inflection points. It also narrows peaks and can be used to resolve fused peaks. When integrating the savitsky golay smoothing algorithm within Chrome Perfect, we worked closely with our customer, Ander Hofer, associate professor at Umeå University in Sweden. We have a video on the channel where Professor Hofer described the benefits that he saw using savitsky golay over other smoothing methods. When to use smoothing Smoothing is not always necessary and should be used only when there is a good reason. Here are some typical situations in which smoothing is indicated. When it is necessary to correct for column bleed by subtracting a baseline chromatogram, any noise on the baseline chromatogram will augment the noise on the analytical chromatogram. By smoothing the baseline chromatogram, this noise can be eliminated. Because the baseline chromatogram lacks peaks, a large smoothing time value may be used. When calibrating over a wide range of amounts, the data points with smaller amounts, those near the origin, are sometimes so affected by noise that it is difficult to achieve sufficient precision for the calibration curve to be accepted. Smoothing the chromatograms often improves reproducibility and eliminates the need to throw out data points or make replicate injections. How to smooth chromatograms Individual raw files may be smoothed manually within the raw file editor. This is the best way to become familiar with the effects of smoothing. Here it is possible to repeatedly smooth the same chromatogram. Multiple linear smoothings are cumulative in their effect but multiple nonlinear smoothings are not. If a chromatogram has already been subjected to median smoothing, then further median smoothings with the same or a smaller smoothing time will have no effect whatsoever. Once a suitable smoothing algorithm and the appropriate smoothing time have been determined, these choices may be put in a method file. All raw files that are processed with this method will be smoothed in the same way.